I'm just being told we have a pick, and it's Kamala Harris of California. Uh, Rev, we're seeing some of the pictures from the day I was about to reference. Absent ideology or party or bias or any of that, as a sheer campaign event, as a uh, as an event that required advance work and stagecraft, her announcement in Oakland was one of the stunners of this cycle. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Margaret Brennan in Washington. We are coming on the air with breaking news. The wait is over. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has chosen Kamala Harris as his running mate. She's someone who can excite the base without upsetting moderates. And certainly Democrats are hoping that she will make Vice President Mike Pence nervous when she goes up against him. Obviously a, uh, a fascinating choice, a historic choice. This is the ultimate in politics, in representation mattering. The historic decision from former Vice President Joe Biden revealing today Senator Kamala Harris was his choice for a running mate. The campaign posting this image of Biden at his home in Delaware today in a Zoom chat with Harris, asking her to join him on the ticket. News of Biden's choice spread across Twitter. In fact, what they call a heat map right here late today. It shows where the tweets were most concentrated when the news was announced and how quickly it spread across the country. Tonight, for the first time in our nation's history, a black woman is on the ticket. Moments ago, the president himself attacking Harris. It went wild and she really connected with the women in the audience, but she cares about women's issues. She, she cares about equality deep within her soul. And it's kind of exciting, this pick. Aside, Team Harris is a considerable network, judging from just the tweets I saw yesterday from her sorority sisters to her HBCU alum and beyond. It seems so Obama-esque. She checks so many boxes in representation. Does she galvanize an energy that looks or feels similar to you? Well, the Trump campaign will make a big deal of the fact that Harris criticized Biden so harshly during the campaign. They'll try to portray her as a far left progressive, but she is a tougher target than many of the others. Well, yeah, Jonathan Carl is isn't that the point of a presidential campaign? And isn't it the job of the media to go and find those previous statements and shine a light on them? But no, you're going to bury them because you're a Democrat Party propagandist. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Trying something just a little different for today. So it appears that the media have their candidate. <laughs> they're, not, they're not leaving any mysteries about who they're supporting while continuing to gaslight the country and pretend like they're, you know, objective, truth-seeking news reporters when they're in fact just i mean they're really an extension of the democrat party and at this point part of the biden campaign so just some predictions going forward and you don't have to exactly be a psychic to be able to see what's coming but the media attention on the biden campaign from here on out will be 100 percent positive and maybe not 100 percent. there may be the rare criticism coming from the far left of the democrat party you know coming after kamala because she's not far left enough and the, the media will be uh they'll want to do that because their whole narrative will be that kamala is a moderate she's not a far left progressive and so any criticism you do see of her will be from the left and it'll be in service of painting kamala as a moderate which we know she's not the media is gonna bristle at any suggestion that she's left-wing or progressive they'll bill her as a moderate and they'll cover up all of her past positions on things like Medicare for All, which she supports, and eliminating private insurance. Uh, she's, you know, supported the New Green Deal on many occasions, which is a far-left Marxist brainchild of AOC. She supports limiting gun rights and said that she would use executive actions to do that specifically targeting assault weapons. And not only that, but she supports a, quote, conversation on lowering the voting age to 16 years old. And not just that, but she thinks that terrorists should be allowed to vote. But people who are in convicted in prison, like the Boston Marathon bomber, on death row, people who are convicted of sexual assault, they should be able to vote? I think we should have that conversation. Okay. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Um, so for people out there who like their insurance, well, they don't get to keep it? Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. It, I support a Green New Deal, and I will tell you why. Climate change 
is an existential threat. Got to stop buying this false choice. You can be in favor of the Second Amendment and also understand that there is no reason in a civil society that we have assault weapons around communities that can kill babies and police officers. So all of these things are things that the media will just pretend never happened, even though she said many of these things during, you know, CNN's town hall. So there's abundance evidence that she said these things. So strap yourselves in folks because we are in for a shitstorm of bullshit in the coming months. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this new format. It's not something I plan on doing all the time, but just throwing in there to change it up every now and then. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by supporting the sponsors that help keep this channel afloat. And if you want to donate, you can do so on one of the platforms listed in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.